This video was made in partnership with Nubi, who are just as obsessed with movies as we are. What exactly goes on behind the scenes of this controversial news corporation? Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 things Bombshell got factually right. For this list, we're taking a look at accurate plot points and details from this drama about the Fox News misconduct scandal. In case you haven't seen the film yet, this list contains spoilers, not to mention bombshells. Number 10. More than 20 women accused Roger Ailes In 2016, Megyn Kelly reportedly informed investigators that she had been sexually harassed by Fox News CEO Roger Ailes. When Kelly goes on the record in Bombshell, the investigators label her with the letter W, meaning that she's the 23rd woman who has accused Ailes. According to Gretchen Carlson's lawyers, more than 20 women accused Ailes of inappropriate behavior, both publicly and privately. Many of the women who spoke out against Ailes were former Fox News employees, including Rudy Bakhtiar, Lori Loon, and Andrea Tanteros. The film does take a few creative liberties with Ailes' accusers. Most notably, Kayla, a Fox News journalist played by Margot Robbie, is a composite character. Just because Kayla is fictitious, though, doesn't mean her story is without truth. I think I'd be freaking phenomenal on your network. I could pluck you out and move you to the front of the line, but I need to know that you're loyal. I need you to find a way to prove it. I'm the bad guy. Number 9. Megyn Kelly's White Santa Debate Cue the firestorm of controversy over my declaring Santa's skin color. Many questioning whether I understand that Santa is a mythical figure, others suggesting I am a racist who is outraged at the idea of a black Santa. During a brief news segment in the film, Kelly scoffs at the possibility that Santa is any color other than white. This is based on an actual Fox News story in which Kelly slammed a Slate article entitled Santa Claus Should Not Be a White Man Anymore. Addressing all the kids watching at home, Kelly firmly insisted that Santa just is white. And by the way, for all you kids watching at home, Santa just is white, but this person is just arguing that, that maybe we should, we should also have a black Santa. But you know, Santa is what he is, and just so you know, we're just debating this because someone wrote about it, kids. She'd go on to say that Jesus was a white man too. Kelly revisited the White Christmas debate in a later segment, claiming that an offhand jest she made snowballed out of control and Fox News was being unfairly targeted. Race is still an incredibly volatile issue in this country, and Fox News, and yours truly, are big targets for many people. Aisha Harris, the Slate Pieces writer, interpreted Kelly's comment as more than just a joke and accused Fox of playing the victim. I felt like they were kind of playing the victim there. Mm. Um, and, and the fact that they tried to deflect it and say that they were also being making a joke out of it, um, it just didn't, it didn't ring true to me. Number 8. Elizabeth Ailes Stood By Her Husband Connie Britton portrays Elizabeth Tilson Ailes, Roger's third wife. Working as a programming executive, Tilson met Ailes at CNBC and they were married in 1998. Just as there's a significant age difference between Britton and John Lithgow, Tilson was 37 while Ailes was 58 when they wed. Bombshell depicts Tilson as a good wife archetype who supports her husband even as he faces a harassment lawsuit with accusations piling up. In response to the allegations, Tilson reportedly stated, quote, This is not about money, this is about his legacy. Despite defending her husband, there were reports that Tilson took the accusations especially hard and considered divorcing Ailes. Nevertheless, the couple remained together until Ailes passed in 2017, less than a year after the scandal hit. Number 7. Gretchen Carlson's Real Stories Although she was given her own afternoon show after leaving Fox & Friends, Gretchen Carlson didn't always fit the network's mold. Leading up to her termination, Carlson took a few stances that challenged the Fox News brand. As seen in Bombshell, Carlson did an expose on how makeup is used to sexualize girls and culture. Well, welcome back, everyone. For the first time in cable news, here I am, makeup free for a reason. Carlson emphasized her point by not wearing any makeup for the segment, claiming this was a first for cable news. Carlson also advocated an assault weapons ban in a 2016 segment. Do we need AR-15s to hunt and kill deer? Do we need them to protect our families? Yes, I'm in favor of people being able to carry. I think some of these mass shootings would have been less deadly if that were the case. But I'm also with the majority today, taking a stand. 89% of viewers disagreed with Carlson, to which she replied on air, quote, that's fine, that's what makes America great. Only a few days after Carlson showed support for stricter gun laws, her contract with Fox News officially expired. Hot in here. Number 6. Roger Ailes Threw Donuts 
actual reports indicate that Ailes was every bit as paranoid as Bombshell suggests. Ailes reportedly had around-the-clock security at his home and was even accused of spying on reporters. One of the most bizarre details that the film gets down is how Ailes used donuts. In multiple scenes, we see Ailes stocking up on these fried desserts. It's said that Ailes orders donuts just so he can throw them at people during his emotional moments. This behavior is backed up in the biographical book The Loudest Voice in the Room, which reads, quote, Ailes could turn donuts into projectiles. Although Ailes didn't always eat the donuts, both the book and this film point out his poor diet, claiming he'd order entire pages off room service menus. Nobody stops watching because of a conflict. They stop watching when there isn't one. Number five, Gretchen Carlson recorded conversations. Instead of going after Fox News, Carlson filed a lawsuit directly against Ailes, who continually denied the allegations aimed at him. In the film, Ailes is finally backed into a corner when his lawyer, Susan Estrich, tells him that Carlson recorded their conversations. In 2014, about two years before the scandal broke out, Carlson started using her iPhone to secretly tape her meetings with Ailes. Everyone knew how powerful Roger Ailes was. I certainly felt intimidated by that. Carlson dedicated an entire year to recording the inappropriate comments of Ailes and other Fox News employees. Ailes reportedly asked Carlson to turn around so he could view her posterior, which we see him do on multiple occasions in Bombshell. But people would be very interested to know that if they're considering trying to arm themselves with any kind of evidence, you should check what your laws are in your particular state. The tapes also caught Ailes telling Carlson, quote, you and I should have had a sexual relationship a long time ago. You're a man-hater. Learn to get along with the boys. You're sexy, but you're too much work. I have a whole list. Will other women come forward? Number four, Megyn Kelly faced backlash from Trump supporters. You may have heard that there was a dust-up involving yours truly and presidential contender Donald Trump. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. Your Twitter account... Only Rosie so O'Donnell. The fact is she asked me a very inappropriate question. She asked, she should really be apologizing to me. You want to know the truth. Fox News' audience is known for being conservative, but that didn't stop Kelly from calling out Donald Trump's treatment towards women during the first Republican presidential debate. This ignited an ongoing feud between the two, with Trump posting numerous tweets that painted Kelly as crazy. There was blood coming out of her eyes, blood coming out of her... Wherever, oh my god, but... did he just accuse me of anger menstruating? Wait, Kelly thus became the story, as well as a target. As the film shows us, Kelly was heavily criticized and even threatened by Trump supporters. I never anticipated that anybody would react to the questions in that particular way. Yeah. Um, but, you know, sort of keep your head down and shoulders back and try to forge forward. In an interview, Kelly stated, quote, The vast majority of Donald Trump supporters are not at all this way, but added, quote, The worst part is the security threats that I've had to face. And as much as I try to avoid some of that online vitriol, I get lots of it and I really hate it. You do understand I have to be above this, right? You know the entire country is talking about your period right now. So you. Yeah. Number three, Roger Ailes' meeting with Rupert Murdoch. Those allegations surfacing just weeks ago and today, this bombshell. Roger Ailes, the man who built Fox News from the ground up, is out as top boss. The final act of Bombshell is mostly faithful to Ailes' downfall as he's barred from the news empire he helped build. Rupert Murdoch issued a statement late yesterday without referring to the harassment charges, saying that Roger Ailes has made a remarkable contribution to our company and our country. Roger shared my vision of a great and independent television organization and executed it brilliantly over 20 great years. On July 21, 2016, Ailes and Susan Estrich reported to the apartment of Rupert Murdoch, played here by Malcolm McDowell. In the film, Murdoch's two sons, Lachlan and James, are also present at the meeting. Absolutely. He and being... Murdoch are friends. Yeah, that, friends that's right. Years. So when we hear about, for example, he's going to be an advisor and $60 million, you know, let's be very careful to take all of that with a grain of salt. This is slightly off as James was not present, although Lachlan did attend. Peter Johnson and Gerson Zweifak are also notably absent from this scene. Nevertheless, Rupert did inform Ailes that he'd temporarily be taking over Fox News. He also denied Ailes' request to walk into the Fox News headquarters with him and announce his departure. Ailes ultimately agreed to go quietly, receiving a severance package of $40 million. Rupert Murdoch and his sons James and Lachlan will now decide on a successor to Roger Ailes and the future of the network he built. Number two, The Black Room. Speaking to a former Fox News journalist played by Jennifer Morrison, Megyn Kelly learns about the infamous Black Room, as various insiders called it. 
Established in 2011 on the 14th floor of the News Corporation building, the Black Room is where Ailes supposedly managed public relations and surveillance campaigns against his foes in secrecy. Among the people Ailes targeted was reporter Gabriel Sherman, who'd go on to write the loudest voice in the room. According to Sherman, the Black Room consisted of, quote, consultants, political operatives, and private detectives who reported only to Ailes. The Fox News CEO reportedly used company money to fund these sketchy operations, although Susan Estrich claimed on Ailes' behalf, quote, these allegations are totally false. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Fox News Dresses Someone has to speak up. Someone has to get mad. Throughout Bombshell, Ailes is seen ordering the network's female talent to wear dresses, sit at see-through desks, and show off their legs. According to the loudest voice in the room, Ailes once called during a segment taping, saying, quote, move that damn laptop, I can't see her legs. He liked to pick on the people who needed him. Women were easy targets. It was about power. I had a see-through desk. He said, if you want to play with the big boys, you have to lay with the big boys. While Fox News denied accusations that there was a miniskirt dress code, Ailes didn't make it easy for female employees to cover up their legs. In the suit, Carlson claims the media mogul subjected her to severe and pervasive sexual harassment at Fox News, alleging Ailes injected sexual and or sexist comments into their conversations, even asking her to turn around so he could view her posterior. Carlson alleges when she met with Ailes to discuss how she was being treated, Ailes told her, you and I should have had a sexual relationship a long time ago, and then you'd be good and better and I'd be good and better." Under Ailes' management, Jedediah Bila claims that the wardrobe department was full of dresses, but no pants were available. Bila was also reportedly told that she couldn't wear orange because Ailes wasn't a fan of the color. After Ailes' departure, women were permitted to start wearing pants and jumpsuits on the air. Ready to go to war? Oh yeah. This video was made in partnership with Nubi, who are just as obsessed with movies as we are. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.